Yep, that's right. Sunny Bimbo, I'm back, baby. Yes, welcome back. And it's another red wine. Ooh. And Pizza Friday. Pizza's all gone. That's not, nothing lasts long in this house. That's okay. Like, then parties, like, when I throw a party, yeah. <laughs> All those rules of civility, they go out the window. It's a free for all. Everyone for themselves. So, hello, folks. Welcome back. Brian, the one, the only Hobo Tom. And you've seen. Uh, I have a son. Eho El Hobo El Vagabundo. Or Eho Del Hobo Vagabundo. Earlier. Previously. I have children out there but yes um, he gave his predictions and he left me a copy somewhere so that I can critique his work of the predictions for this su Sunday's match which of which I'll be able to see a little bit of I do have to work Sunday until 7 30 I'll miss the pre-show I know for sure the first match, probably the second match. Well, I might get in for that, though. And there's always of my most delicious breakfast sandwiches. Because it's Sunday. You should always have breakfast on Sunday. I should really mark off what I do on my calendar more frequently. Because I finally, well, El Vagabundo got that video done for me. So that's always a good sign. I've been working a lot, too, because I had to. Out of work, or yeah, someone out of work. I had to go collect my aluminum. That's a whole other issue. No, I cannot do that. I did a lot of that though. But I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling because again, it is a red wine and Pizza Friday. Uh, so let's see here. Let's start off. Let's see here. Big sale, 59. Yes, sir. I still haven't figured out my computer system. This is a Hobo Studios. So what do you expect? But just for your worthwhile comment, you, sir, have noticed that Jordan has back.
dangerous air. And let's see here. I'm going to get this name wrong already. Marini. Yes, thank you for interacting with me over there on the Discord. You, sir, are in the six count. Oh my God. Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Again, Sunny Bimbo, you got your shout out already. You're going to be, you know what? I have the card here somewhere. Is that the card? Where is it? Oh, no, Dan Blaze. Sonny Bimbo, I will figure out a way to get you into the havoc of Halloween. Sonny Bimbo. You'll be in the havoc of Halloween. Again, if you want to be like Sonny Bimbo and be a character in the Daytona Beach Bumfight League, all you have to do is hit me up every so often. Um, if I think you get in touch with me on a fairly regular basis, and I and if I even think you go through all the video thank yous, you out there in the YouTube or f wherever else I post these videos, I forget sometimes. Universe, YouTube become a character, whether you like or not. I'm <laughs> no looking. In the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. Yeah, Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling Association. Yep, and it's the Bum Fight League. It is Daytona Beach. What can I say? Eventually, I'll, I don't know. I can't put in Liz because I can't have a dinosaur that she has tamed. But there's always Tamer. So we'll see. But enough about that. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Kind of decent show. The thing I don't like about this Go Home show, it kind of predicts, or, yeah, it, 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 it validates. This is the right list. The predictions made by EO Del. Del Hobo El Vagabundo. And probably a lot of your predictions too. Out there. Because. I don't know. I'm looking at what he circled. I don't see a lot of builds changing hands. Oh wow. Wait. Only one belt? Two belts change hands? <sighs> this is going to be one of those weird. <sighs> Weird pay-per-views. I hope it's not long. Enough about that. Well, the reason why I got into that is that SmackDown starts off in memory of Animal. I've already given my tribute about Road Warrior Animal, John Laurinaitis. Again, my condolences go out to his family. Um, six years old. It is on the young side. He was around during that Odd era of the 80s, though. And again, more so in the 80s and 90s. The late 80s, early 90s is what I remember the most. Because I sound old when I joke about Zima. If you know what Zima is out there in the YouTube universe, let me know, too. Because I think it was, like, at the time, like, the most sugary, most soda-tasting alcoholic beverage. It literally tasted like Sprite with, with like vodka in it. And not that much vodka either, by the way, if I remember correctly. But enough about that. Um, so uh, they, again, they do have a little tribute in memoriam of Animal, Road Warrior Animal, John Laurinaitis. Classy. Again, I will always... Uh, I will applaud when, when good things or right things happen. Don't ever get me wrong. I may trash talk a bunch of things. 
if you do the right thing, if you do good things, I will owe, no matter how much I despise or, or dislike you, if you do the good and right thing, I will always applaud. I say, I will call it right down the middle. If you're good, I, I will say you are good. If you are bad, trust me, you will hear it to no end. But yeah, again, every so often, WWE does the right thing. So it makes sense. Um, starts off with AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, and Sami Zayn talking garbage in the ring in their promos. And this leads to a triple threat because Sami Zayn decided to beat up um, both AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. And, and, and um, oh, what's his face? Keon said, no, no, no. We're going to have the triple threat now. And I'm like, oh, God. No, please don't. This is going to ruin the pay-per-view. It kind of did. It sets the tone where this is like a little, I hope, a taste or sampling of what we'll see. If this is just that little, like, cocktail hot dog, or, or that little, like, piece of caviar and a cracker. And the other thing is the filet mignon that you're getting for dinner. Oh. I'll hold my judgment reserve until I actually see it. But, yeah, so as far as this match goes, um, it was AJ Styles versus Jeff Hardy versus Sami Zayn in, in a triple threat match. Um, AJ Styles... What they did, it was very classic Raw TV. Two wrestlers would be in the ring. One wrestler would be outside. So you'd really see the focus on two of them at a time. They kind of stuck to that very formulaic way of doing stuff. Yeah. It wasn't bad, though. Um, so AJ Styles uh, works over Jeff Hardy a little bit, then baseball slides into Sami Zayn. And then it's someone else's turn after the break. Now, Sammy beats up AJ Styles and shoves Jeff Hardy off the ring. And then it's Jeff Hardy uh, beating Sami Zayn and AJ Styles, or using Sami Zayn for poetry in motion on AJ Styles. Um, he had a whisper in the wind on both AJ Styles and Sami Zayn. Then they all like exchange blows. So AJ would hit. Jeff, Jeff would hit Sammy, Sammy would hit AJ, and then and then AJ would hit Sammy, and it just kind of did that almost triple threat yay thing, and I haven't seen that before, so this somewhat original, where at least the three of them do a three way yay boo, yay, yay. Okay, boo, boo, okay, yay. Something like that. So that was different. I'll, again, I will give credit where credit is due. If you do something different, I'll, I might like it, I might hate it, but I'll definitely say it's different. So that's good. Let me all exchange blows, like I just said. Uh, Sami Zayn, he gets the pin after AJ hit a phenomenal forearm on. Jeff Hardy, and according to El uh, Hijo del Hobo Vagabundo dos Quatro, I don't, I don't even, I can't even remember his name anymore. He is Jeff Hardy winning, and this makes sense because <laughs> for two reasons, or they'll do something screwy. Sami Zayn beat Jeff Hardy, so he stands tall, but then. AJ Styles climbs up the ladder and he has his moments where he's holding both belts. The, kind, the math, and, and one day we'll bring in uh, doc, Dr. Tom, Dr. Keller, to more thoroughly explain WWE math and the like weird statistical instances where if you stand tall in the pre show, for the most part, you don't win. So in this part, Sami Zayn and AJ stood tall. Therefore, Jeff Hardy should win. But um, in this instance, Sami Zayn won. It was fun, I'll tell you what. 
all three are, are so good. It was fun and entertaining, and this is the one match that, that I really didn't tune out of. This is a surf and turf match. And then let's see here. Um, turn the page. Then we get into a lot of promos. And go home shows do tend to be heavy promo. The Miz and Morrison and heavy machinery. For <laughs> Sent Otis lawyers, guns, and money. Yes, that is what he needs. Send Otis lawyers, guns, and money. Send them, if you please. Just like Warren Zevon says, you need lawyers, guns, and money. Miz and Morrison, they confront heavy machinery with legal papers. However, only the Miz's name is on those legal papers. So Otis takes out all his frustrations on John Morrison. Yeah, John Morrison, you shouldn't be there with your cheap Samsung 4G thing like I have and record everything because well you only get eight minutes of recording time because heaven knows John Morrison probably has more stuff in his cell phone than I do. But again, send Otis lawyers guns and money because poor Morrison gets destroyed. <laughs> yeah, this almost sounds like a Warren Zevon song. And yes, if you remember Zima, you'll know who Warren Zevon is anyway. Um, then the next segment is uh, Bailey and Sasha recap. Bailey does another promo about Nikki Cross. Yeah, whatever. Then we have Grand Metal League versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out, heavy knee striking, Grand, Grand Metal League, some kicks, flips, and arm drag. He's good at. <sighs> the thing is, with this, you have the strong style on one side, the lucha style on the other side. I like this match. To me, it was good. It was that good clash of styles. So it made sense to me. Um, Shinsuke then hits the knees. Grand Metal Leak again. He does the slippy stuff. Metal Leak. Uh, yeah, I guess his, uh, he does his diving and, and sends uh, Shinsuke Nakamura into the barricades. Next time we see Shinsuke, he's, he's delivering knees to the face of Sh of Grand Malik. Again, very much strong stylish. A Grand flies out. He flies over the top rope. Again, you have this constant which style is better? Is it going to be the Lucha style or the strong style? The very New Japan pro wrestling style versus uh, uh, s s shoot, CM I am so confused now by work. The AAA CMLL style. Yeah, and Sunday night, I was just too zonked to stay up until 1 a.m. to watch our midnight. Yeah, by midnight, I was in bed to watch CML. Was that? Yeah, that was Sunday. Or was it Saturday that I was, I just said, screw this, I'm playing video games and I'm actually relaxing. But that's okay. Whatever it was, it was. Um, Grand Malik again flies over the top. Again, he drops from the top. He gets dropped. Uh, he tried to go up one more time to the top rope. Gets dropped down by Shinsuke Nakamura near the back of the head. Reverse exploder. And then Kinshasa. Oh, Shinsuke. Bumaye. Because Bumaye means kill him. Or something like him. Um, Ali Bumaye. Or, or Champa Bumaye. Again, great chance. Can't say that anymore though, which sucks. I don't think you can even do the, the real rock and roller. Or, or double fisted versions of it. Yeah, it's it's bad. I think they even take the guns away from Yosemite Sam. Boo. Yosemite Sam's funniest cartoon character with guns besides Elmer Fudd. Um and then, so, Shinsuke Nakamura wins. Good cheeseburger match.
Then Cesaro comes in, beats up Grand Metalik. Lindsay Drago tries to come in, come in, make the save. Yeah, he gets beat up for his efforts. Then the last one in the ring is Kalisto. Kalisto is dressed like he's going to be part of Ijo Del Fantasmo's team. I know that's not his name anymore. It's um the the Lucha Cartel, whatever it is. He looks like he's going to be the fourth person joining. Again, Ijo Del Fantasmo, um, Raul Mendoza, and whoever that third guy is. So I just forget off the top of my head who that. It's not, not Umberto, but whoever that third guy is, though, in like the Lucha Cartel. That's what Kalisto is dressed like. So we'll see how much longer he stays in the ring. Um, the Lucha House Party, both Grand Malik and Lindsay Dorado, Charlie Kalisto, he's the last one. He's like, do I really want to get this fine white sport jacket ruined? Never. And then we have the Usos and uh, Roman Reign set up. Um, you see Afa from the Simone SWAT team and Rikishi, both fathers of their respective sons. Um, Jay cuts a promo. Paul Heyman says, yeah, you'll hear Roman Reigns speak in the ring. Then we see Bar it goes to Baron Corbin. And then Matt Riddell's there cutting his promo. Um, there's Matt Riddell versus Baron Corbin. Matt just beats up Baron Corbin. He just jumps so much it's great. The referee warns him. Then he says, ring the bell. Uh, Riddell does a standing Camaro, which should break Corbin's arm pretty simply. Standing, you don't get as much leverage, but still, if, if you have it and you're pulling on that arm, something's going to snap and you're going to dislocate the shoulder very, very easily. Uh, Corbin then does a double underhook, then the knee, <laughs> then he gets Riddell into the corner, some chops and fists. Riddell does the arm ringer into. That's something. Oh, I think this is when he tries to get the twister in. No, not yet. Sends him into something. And then Corbin gets sent over the table. We go to commercial break. Uh, Baron Corbin then back in the ring. The ground pound on top of poor Matt Riddles. Does a top rope choke. Very classic heel move. Again, heel tropes are always good. And they're always respected. On this show, Mandel hits the ripcord knee, the elbow in the corner. Then he goes for the twister, doesn't get it though. Hits the broton. He, well, before that, he hit the broton. He tried another ripcord knee, but that got reversed into a deep six. Um, Matt Riddell got caught into the end of days. Baron Corbin wins in a cheeseburger match whoa then we have Alexa Bliss so yeah that was different um then we have Alexa Bliss taking on Lacey Evans Alexa Bliss still looks amazing she has her hair in pigtails again I have no hair so I have to put my hands up like this saying ooh pigtails um Lacey Evans just looks like MILF. <laughs> and then there was, I think before this, there was a promo of like, I want to say it was Carmella getting dressed. But again, this is where uh, the one guy, like, because I saw her hands. And I'll tell you what, see these ugly, beat up hands? Yeah. These hands are prettier looking than Carmella's hands because her hands were all wrinkly. Again, the thing in Florida. Do not be a blonde-haired woman and sit in the sun in Florida. It will wreck you. you if you think you are a 30-year-old blonde woman and you go s sun tanning a lot, you very quickly, all of a sudden, become age 50. Trust me, I've seen it. You want to put suntan lotion on. You want to wear a hat. You want to have your Bahama Mama hat on. Um, if you have the body, wear a bikini. But still, remember... That sun just 
enjoys to kill blonde haired women. Carmela! <coughs> yeah. Who's <coughs> snogging the court crate? Oh, oh is, is that COVID 19 I have? I don't know. But yeah, so it was Alexa Bliss taking on Lacey Evans. Alexa goes for a quick pin on Lacey Evans. No, that's not happening. Lacey Evans goes to the. She does a cheek wipe. She throws Alexa Bliss into the ring post. Uh, does, does a little cheek pulls the 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 little handkerchief from from between her boobies, pats herself on the cheek, and throws it at her. I don't know what's disgusting. The fact that she has boob sweat on oh, that's kind of arousing. I don't know, but yeah, like the boob between the boob sweat and the and the cheek padding, like there has to be some like COVID nineteen thing about it. Oh, and by the way, I'll, I'll get to that at the end. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, then she has, she has the Bronco Buster. And then, uh, I so hate it when they put on the Million Dollar Dream, the Taz Mission, and it's just a wrestle. I'm so sick of that. Use the Taz Mission. Make the person tap. Make him go to sleep. Do something with it. Old school people like me see that, and, and I'm sure we're all like, Why? Uh, then we have the, the fiend music. Then we go to break. And then once the fiend music hits, Alexa Bliss goes crazy. I guess she gets DQ'd. Because the ref told her to stop and she wouldn't stop. So yeah, the fiend, the brain music comes in. I guess Lacey Evan wins by DQ. You know what? I'm going to downgrade this. Because they did... Uh, I don't know. It's the fiend. It was a ham sandwich. The dusty ham sandwich with no cheese or mayo on it. So it's a ham sandwich. And then we have the uh, Roman Reigns and Jay Uso promo. Um, for the most part, they talk a little bit. Roman Reigns comes down and, and Jack Stay Uso. I like that. That's very good. And that was Raw. Wow, were there? Yeah. One, two, three. What were the four matches? Um, Florida, as I was going to so that was raw. That was a good cheeseburger raw. And Florida is going to type three, where you're now going to have unrestricted access. You still have to wear masks. Um, whoever wants to go anywhere, I think they're still recommending that. Uh, sports venues are at a certain max capacity, so I don't know if I'll if I'll get to go wrestling. If I ever do have that magical scenario, I will. You guys in the YouTube universe deserve live wrestling, or at least somewhat taped live wrestling. Um, NXT. I guess I'll be touring eventually. So again, if they come to Daytona Beach and I'm off that day, Hobo Tom will be there. Um, other than that, I hope everyone had a good and cheerful Red Wine and Pizza Friday. I will be back. I have off tomorrow. I'll be back sometime on Sunday because I do have to go to work. Get to work, you son of a bitch, or you're fired. <laughs> 